Hello students, welcome to my channel. This is Shantanu from RG Crafty. Today, I will talk about Indian temple architecture along with its basic forms and classification. We will also discuss about the sculptures, iconography and ornamentation. At last, I will talk about one of the famous relief sculptures of South India, the descent of Ganga or Arjuna's penance. So let's start. Basic form of a Hindu temple. The basic form of a Hindu structural temple consists of the following 1. Garvagriha It literally means womb house and is a cave like a sanctum. In the earliest temples it was a small cubical structure with a single entrance. Later it grew into a larger complex. The Garvagriha is made to house the main icon main deity which is itself the focus of much ritual attention. The second point is Mandapa. It is the entrance to the temple. It may be a portico or colonnaded series of columns placed at regular intervals, hall that incorporates space for a large number of worshippers, dances and such other entertainments are practiced here. Some temples have multiple mandapas in different sizes named as Ardha Mandapa, Mandapa and Maha Mandapa. This is the picture of Khajuraho temple. Here this portion is known as Garbhagriha and this is Mandapa. This is Ardha Mandapa, Mandapa and Maha Mandapa. Third point is Shikhara or Bamana. They are mountain like the spire of a freestanding temple. Sekhar is found in North Indian temples and Bhimana is found in South Indian temples. Sekhara has a curving shape while Bhimana has a pyramidal like structure. Fourth point, Amalaka. It is a stone disk like structure at the top of the temple and they are common in North Indian temples. Kalasha, it is the topmost point of the temple and commonly seen in North Indian temples. Antarala, that is vestibule. Antarala is a transition area between the Garbhagriha and the temple's main hall, Mandapa. Jagati, it is a raised platform for sitting and praying and is common in North Indian temples. Bahana, it is the mount or vehicle of the temple's main deity along with a standard pillar or dhwaj which is placed axially before the sanctum. Here this is Sikhara that is the tower. This disc like structure is known as Amalaka and this the uppermost tip is known as Kalasha. Classification of Indian temples. Indian temples can be classified into two broad orders as 
Nagara in North India and Dravida in South India. At times, the Vesara style of temples as an independent style created through the mixing of Nagara and Dravida orders. The Nagara or North Indian temple architecture. Nagara is the style of temple architecture which became popular in Northern India. It is common here to build an entire temple on a stone platform with steps leading up to it. Unlike in South India, it doesn't usually have elaborate boundary walls or gateways. Earliest temples had only one Sikhara, but in the latter periods, multiple Sikharas came. The Garbhagriya is always located directly under the tallest tower. Nagara architecture is clearly seen in the temple of Khajuraho. The Dravida or South Indian temple architecture. Unlike the Nagara temple, the Dravida temple is enclosed within a compound wall. The front wall has an entrance gateway at its center, which is known as Gopura or Gopuram. The shape of the main temple tower is known as Bhimana Sikhara in Nagara style. The Bhimana is like a stepped pyramid that rises up geometrically rather than the curving Sikhara of Northern India. In South India, the word Sikhara is used only for the crowning element at the top of the temple, which is usually shaped like a small stupika or an octagonal cupola. This is equivalent to the Amalaka or Kalasha of North Indian temples. In North Indian temples, we can see images such as Mithunas and the river goddesses Ganga and Yamuna guarding the temple. But in the Dravida style of temple architecture, instead of these sculptures, we can see the sculptures of fierce Dwarpalas or doorkeepers guarding the temple. A large water reservoir or a temple tank enclosed in the complex is general in South Indian temples. Subsidiary shrines are either incorporated within the main temple tower or located as a distinct separate small shrine beside the main temple. The North Indian idea of multiple Sikharas rising together as a cluster was not popular in Dravida style. This is the structure of Dravida architecture. This is Gopuram. This area is known as Mandapa. This is Garbhagriha. The main tower is known as Bhimana. The top portion is known as Shikhara. Sculptures, Iconography and Ornamentation Iconography is a branch of art history which studies the images of deities. It consists of identification of image based on certain symbols and mythology associated with them. Even though the fundamental and the meaning of the deity may remain the same, 
for centuries. Its specific usage at a spot can be a response to its local or immediate social, political or geographical context. Every region and period produce its own distinct style of images with its regional variations in iconography. The temple is covered with elaborate sculptures and ornament that form a fundamental part of its conception. The placement of an image in a temple is carefully planned. For instance, river goddesses Ganga and Yamuna are visually found at the entrances in a Nagara temple. Dwarpalas are usually found on the gateway or gopurams of Dravida temples. Similarly, Mithunas, Navagrahas and Yakshas are also placed at the entrances to guard them. Various forms or aspects of the main divinity are to be found on the outer walls of the sanctum. The Astadikapalas face eight key directions on the outer walls of the sanctum and or on the outer walls of the temple. Subsidiary shrines around the main temple are dedicated to the family or incarnations of the main deity. The various elements of ornamentation are Gavaksha, Vyala, Yali, Kalpalata, Amalaka, Kalasha, etc. Descent of Ganga or Arjuna's Penance Medium Granite Rock Circa 7th century AD Dynasty Pallava It is located at Mamallapuram, Tamil Nadu Size 30 meter length by 15 meter height Subject matter This relief sculpture depicts the descent of Ganga or Arjuna's penance. Description Apparently, there are two versions to the interpretation of the relief sculpture Descent of Ganga or Arjuna's penance. Arjuna's penance it is believed to be the depiction of Arjuna performing penance to receive the Pashupata Astra to defeat the Kauravas. Shiva, pleased with his penance, is seen granting him this wish. Descent of Ganga The same ascetic is believed by some historians to be sage Bhagirath performing penance to seek Shiva's help in bringing the river Ganga from the heavens to earth. The relief sculpture on stone faces east is skillfully curved. There is a large perpendicular fissure which is in between two boulders. There are over 100 figures on the relief including gods, goddesses, humans, half-humans, gunners, animals, etc. This great cosmic event of Ganga descending on earth is captured here. It seems as if everyone is watching this event. Mythical figures, Ganas, Kinnagaras, Nagas are also present. Lord Shiva is seen near the Kinnaras. Bhagiratha is doing penance on one leg. Ganga is seen in an anthropomorphic form of human and serpent. Nagas too can be seen swimming. The elephants both male and female and smaller ones too are prominent in the relief. This is the picture of the sculpture Descent of Ganga or 
Arjuna's penance. This is another view of descent of Ganga or Arjuna's penance. These are the enlarged view of descent of Ganga or Arjuna's penance. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe and if there is any doubt or query, please put a note at the comment box below. See you in the next video. Bye.